Today, we're going to talk with Benoît Allemand, senior research analyst here at Finance Watch, uh, about the campaign that Finance Watch launched exactly a month ago, um, the statu quo life cycle. And basically, um, this, this, this very uh, big name that changed finance. And we want to understand exactly why, uh, also how. But as you know, this webinar takes place in two sessions. So we have two days um, where we talk a little bit about, you know, the big problems. And then on the 5th of November, same time, we will talk about the solution. So uh, this is split into two sessions. The first question, why we are here today, you know, why current regulation will not avoid a future crisis, according to, to Finance Watch. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mathieu, and, and welcome to everyone. Uh, as Mathieu said, let's make this session as interactive as possible. So I will take your questions uh, as they come. Bef before we start, I'd like to mention that when you talk about the next financial crisis, uh, you, can approach, uh, you can approach that from two different angles or two different analyses. The first one is a macroeconomic um, perspective, which is to identify where financial bubbles currently are, what is the source of these bubbles, uh, where and, and, and when uh, they could blow uh, and create massive losses in the financial system. That's uh, not the, pr the perspective or the major perspective of Finance Watch. It's rather the second approach, which is um, has financial regulation and, and the re-regulation that has been put in place after the crisis in 2008. Um, is this able to prevent the, 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 the next crisis? Uh, and if not, at least, can it protect citizens and, and taxpayers from the effects uh, and, the, and the detrimental effects of this next crisis. So our focus is much less on the macroeconomic factors and saying, for example, that maybe we have a bubbles uh, in commodities, as certain people say, or that you know quantitative easing in the US is gonna slow down and markets are not anticipating that enough. Uh, we leave that a bit aside, even if it's of course a matter of interest, and we focus on the quality of financial regulation and mm -hmm. is that financial regulation able to uh, prevent the next crisis or protect us from the effects uh, of that crisis. And just to answer the question, but I think you know our answer, and I hope you have, uh, you have uh, had a look at the, uh, the different uh, material we've published uh, online. Yeah. The, our answer is, is unfortunately no. Uh, the, the, the regulation in place, which, which by the way is largely not yet implemented, so I mean effective, uh, mo most of it is still being negotiated or trans translated into national law will not prevent the next crisis and will not protect taxpayers from, from the effects of the next crisis. Mm -hmm. When I look a little bit uh, of the material, so you find it on financewatch.org website from the, on the campaign page. Um, if I click here on the first, basically, uh, first part of what you, you create as a cycle, uh, there is something in, in, in the graph here that I think is very interesting. When, when you talk about the instability of the system, I'm not a, an expert in finance at all, but when I look at the graph, I think it's very interesting to see that between 45, 1945 and 1975, more or less, uh, the Trente Glorieuses, as they call in, in, in France, uh, we have a, some a system where there is almost no banking crisis. And before that and after that, you really see how, how, how high was the, was, was the percentage. Mm. How can we explain, you know, this really change? And it's not a small change, it seems to me. No, ex indeed, it's not a small change. Uh, again, uh, there are macroeconomic factors that play a role into the, if you like, the, the um, what, what the, the graph looks like mm -hmm. and the fact that there has been 30 years of, of stability. But first, the main factor is the f is related to the, the reaction of public authorities at, at in the US and the EU, but at global level, after the, uh, the, the, the stock market crash of, of 1929 in the US and the impact it had on the, on, on the economies and, and what we call the Great Depression. Um, basically, public authorities um, decided that uh, to avoid that, they really needed to put in place a very strong and strict framework of financial regulation. Mm -hmm. So you actually had a period of deregulation uh, culminating in the, in the 1920s um, which led obviously to the, to the crash, and so we enter, uh, you know, in the 30s and 40s, we enter uh, a, a new paradigm where um, it is assumed that if you leave markets to themselves and the banking system to itself, it will lead to instability 
and to uh, potential major crashes that then will impact the, the economy and ordinary citizens mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in a major way. And so we, we enter a phase which will last for 30 or 35 years where it is assumed that the financial system is effective in delivering its, its crucial services to society. As you know, as Finance Trust, we believe the system is, plays a crucial role for society. We are actually advocates of, the, of a healthy financial system. So in this paradigm that, that we have left 30 years ago, it is assumed that the financial system is effective in delivering these services to, so, to society only if its activities are strictly regulated and that the framework of its activities uh, is sufficiently uh, solid. Of course, and we might discuss about that in, in a few minutes, uh, we are now in, in a very different paradigm um, still after the crisis. You know, when you here maybe to, to put it in context, you had a very important G20 meeting in 2009 in Pittsburgh, no? where they talk basically about trying to put a, a legal frame, some regulation around what had just happened, this huge crisis. What happened? What was the, the concrete measure right after Pittsburgh 2009? And where are we four years later? So th there was a reaction, a, a strong reaction, which is which is welcome. And also a lot has been done over the, over the last five years. So we're not saying nothing has been done. There's no uh, regulation. Actually, we, we might even think there's, there's too much of it in terms of complexity and, and sheer size in terms of number of pages of regulation. Um, so it's not like nothing has been done. The, the, basically, the way to look at the reaction of the G20 heads of state, you know, public authorities globally in general, is that um, they did not go as far as to question the fundamental principles that organize the financial system today. So they did not question and shake up the paradigm that we are in and that we've been in for the last 30 years, which assumes that financial markets, as other markets, by the way, but financial markets and, and the banking system is best delivering benefits to society if, to, you know, to put it in a nutshell, left, left alone. And so that, you know, that would create, that, that, that would um, basically free up innovation, creativity, and that the financial system left to itself, so left to self-regulation, is going to be the most effective in, in serving society. It's going to have automatic benefits for society. Unfortunately, the G20 did not question that. And so if there is indeed something that you could call re-regulation, uh, unfortunately, it is still embedded in the framework of the, the regulation pre-crisis, um, which, which we think is a major problem. Mm -hmm. um, let me go back. We, we have a question in categories of the chart that we just shown before. So I'll get back to it. What has happened since 2008? Hmm? And why did mid-2000 show zero banking crisis? So let's, let's go back here. I think, yes, it's true that the graph doesn't show um, recent years. Do you have data ab ab about this? So we stop here in 2008, and we see here like a, an interesting, really, we're close to zero. Can be, some have called that the calm before the, the storm no mm -hmm. so and we can see also this just before the storm of 1929 so we can see that this is happening it seems always mm -hmm. before you have a, an important storm and a huge number of crises you have this really this very tran tranquil or calm quiet period no mm -hmm. uh, do you have an explanation for that well indeed as you mentioned there there are patterns to to financial crisis and to uh, to the instability of the, the, of the system or patterns to volatility, if you like. So uh, it's not that all of a sudden you can say that there was a, a short period while, um, you know, banks were behaving better or the, system, the regulatory system was better. Uh, it, it has more to do with uh, patterns and, and like Mathieu mentioned, uh, quiet before the storm. Um, now, to come back to the reaction of the G20 and to understand why um, we think uh, we answer negatively to, this, to, to the question, does the re-regulation uh, that we have um, initiated after the crisis, does it prevent the next crisis and protect the taxpayers? I will, I will use a, a, um, you know, a short metaphor that is, that is only worth uh, what it's worth, but, but that allows us to understand what we mean. Uh, you could say that um, citizens and taxpayers are uh, living on the coastlines, uh, like, like fishermen villages, uh, and that basically there was a tsunami in 2008, and the fact is that, you know, you know these, these, well, the wave went way over the coastline, and so citizens and taxpayers took the hit. Now, the G20 after that, the reaction of the G20 um, is the, the major ambition is to create embankments 
Um, so if you like walls that will protect uh, the coastline from uh, the effects of these tsunamis. It's not that the G20 doesn't look at the cause of these tsunamis and it's identified as what, what you would call here in this metaphor uh, underwater volcanoes and, 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 and too big of, of these volcanoes. So the cause is identified, but the cause is not really addressed, how to make them smaller. Uh, the major focus of re-regulation is about uh, making those embankments more solid where they exist and creating new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, quick, quickly, the, the main embankment or, um, if, if you like, buffer to, to absorb shocks is, of course, the, um, the own capital um, of, uh, of a financial institution. Uh, so that's the whole framework of, of Basel III, translated to CRD4 uh, in Europe, which so is every to say bank needs to get a certain amount of capital, and this right now you say it's it's too low. It, it was definitely way too low before the crisis. Of course, the ambition of Basel III, and you know, um, supported by the G20 uh, uh, decisions after 2008, is to increase significantly the amount of capital, own capital that the banks need to hold. Um, but again, unfortunately. Um, Instead of questioning the way this, this amount of capital is calculated, um, we are still based on, 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 on met a methodology that is, that is based on the regulation that is prior to the crisis. And, and in a nutshell, mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to, to develop a bit, but in a nutshell, it's left to the banks themselves to evaluate, um, if you like, uh, how much capital they need that is uh, versus the, the amount of risk they take. So the principle is good that as a bank that takes more risk needs to have more capital aside but the, the amount of risk that they take is left to themselves to determine uh, and regulators themselves notice that there's a big problem with that because it's up to the bank and its own methodology to define how much they are exposed to risk um, and unfortunately uh, it allows them to uh, as we've seen before and as we'll see uh, certainly uh, in the coming months or years to hide um, or to, to minimize some of the risks uh, they are actually exposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, so even this first embankment which, which was the focus of the G20 Uh, is certainly not solid or high enough or however you call it. And just to finish on this and, and maybe take other questions, you could also say that embankments have no use in case of a tsunami. So basically, if you have small, to, to stay in the metaphor, small underwater volcanoes, they will create waves that could be absorbed uh, um, by, by these embankments. So, so then they work. But if you leave these, these, these giant uh, volcanoes, they will create tsunamis and no embankment as solid as it is. As it is. And unfortunately, we think they're not solid enough. Will, will prevent the tsunami to reach uh, the coastline. Mm -hmm. uh, question here by Stephanie. We, we, we keep talking about um, really the G20 uh, in 2009, but it, as it's related. Um, and the question, why did the leaders not question enough this parallel in Pittsburgh? No? Why are we, are we blocked? Do you think it's a question of ideology because for 30 years we've gone in one direction, difficult to move? Do you think as Professor Anat Admanit in, in New York wrote recently in the New York Times in, um, in August that, you know, the, the, the financial industry is there to lobby and it's a huge machine. I mean, is, are there other, other um, uh, answer or elements of answer to, mm -hmm. to this? Well, it's an excellent question and I think Mathieu started with a, a, a very good set of answers. I would add to, to, the, to the, the answers you had, uh, the, the, what we call, and it's on the website, the the fear factor, uh, that, that's a quote from uh, Simon Johnson, who was a former chief economist at the IMF, who is now an economist working at the MIT. And what he means by the fear factor sums up what Mathieu said. It, it's really that basically the banking lobby uh, will, will tell politicians and, and regulators that, um, you know, if, if, if they do re-regulate um, more strictly the financial system, uh, there will be an automatic uh, damage to the real economy. Um, and growth will go down and, and it, will, it will forbid uh, the financial system to deliver the services it wants to uh, deliver to society. Which is a bit um, heavy as a message, but it really works. So indeed, the, the fact that the G20 did not question uh, the paradigm fundamentally is unfortunately linked to um, the fact that this paradigm has put for 30 years the, the, the financial, financial industry in the driving seat, if you like. And not only in the driving seat of its own activities and, and, and what it decides to develop, uh, be it speculation versus investment, etc. It, it, you know, it's, it's free to, to focus on, on whatever it wants. And unfortunately, as we've seen in the, in the 20s, 1920s, and, and we've seen recently and still today, of course, the financial sector, if, if left alone, will prefer speculative activities, especially when the losses 
absorbed uh, by society. Uh, but also, so it's been in the driving seat of its own activities, but it's also been in the driving seat of, of, of regulation. So we have been in a system of self-regulation. Mm -hmm. And so basically, the, these very powerful entities that have grown dramatically as well, so gained in importance and gained in, in impact and weight uh, to politicians, um, yeah, be, being in the driving seat, and it's really difficult for politicians and regulators to basically, you know, put them back and, and take the, the, the wheel uh, away from them, if you like, and put society back in the driving seat. It's 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 a, it's really a challenge, and um, I would say quickly, and then we can we can elaborate quickly. The I'm afraid the only way this is going to happen is if there is sufficient pressure from citizens and and uh, on on politicians so that they realize this you know it is urgent, and it would then justify uh, much more. Uh, stricter measures and, and much more structural measures uh, in terms of regulation that w what we have seen today. So, so indeed, this, the, the, the ideology that plays a role because we demonstrate as well, and, and we will demonstrate in the coming months that the the, the paradigm of self-regulation is is purely fun, um, funded, if you like, on 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 ideology, not on facts. So it it actually doesn't work. But we are we are still in there, and um, and indeed, as long as we'll be in there. Um, regulation will, will likely not be uh, not be effective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, maybe a very short, but as we're talking about about this, uh, Nicolas asking uh, what you think about you know the Merkel and uh, Hollande kind of of, uh, of government. I mean, we're not going deep here, but so far, do you think that it is it is um, it is changing, or you see any or any change ahead, or citizens definitely need to put more pressure as you, uh, as you say no citizens definitely need to engage in this topic and it's, it's it's really a pleasure to have to have this audience here for this sort of webinar because we, we do understand that finance is, is a technical topic but at the same time we, we we do understand and and i hope most citizens realize that um as long as the financial system will not be addressed in terms of the activities it has the the size of these activities and as, as long as as, a, as as we don't shift paradigm as i just mentioned and go to a very different kind of regulation Unfortunately, the much more exciting, I would say, society challenges, and, and uh, some of them are also urgent, uh, but um, the you know things that are probably more interesting uh, than the financial system will not be able to to progress and, and to function. So, because we are in the system where finance has such an important role, uh, other challenges um, that are probably much more exciting to the average citizen will not be able to go forward for lack of investment and and, and capital. Mm -hmm. um, so, so definitely, unfortunately, there, there still needs to um, be a lot of citizens' pressure, and and um, and in France and Germany, as you mentioned, it's really, really clear that that uh, the Merkel government in the last in the last few years and the Hollande government uh, have not at all um, taken the lead, if you like, in terms of financial regulation. What they have put forward is 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 to say the least uh, weak, uh, and still definitely embedded in the old paradigm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we have many questions coming. Let's see if we manage to to get them all. But um, we have one about um, you know after the crisis, the state had to jump in with quite a, an impressive amount of money. So the question is, you know, who is paying in the end? I mean, is is a citizen really have to pay that, or uh, or, or not? Is the, is the money flowing back to the state? I mean, what what has happened with uh, this? This, this amount of money. So, as we saw on, on the on the website, there's there's an, an amount of um, of one thousand six hundred billion euros that has been engaged by uh, taxpayers and citizens. Uh, the amount that has been committed, uh, it's is much higher. Uh, but in terms of what has been put at the budget of the different member states, it's it's uh, it's it's this figure of one point six trillion euros. This. There are two categories of, 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 of money in there. One has been directly um, put into banks in the form of capital. And uh, the other part, which is larger, is composed of guarantees. But again, even if those guarantees are not used, um, this they need to be financed by, uh, by the different member states. And it's actually put at, in the budget of each member states, which means that this, this amount of money as a guarantee cannot go somewhere else. So it's immobilized, immobilized uh, even if it's not used. Uh, so it is really th there is a direct negative impact uh, on citizens. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that answers your question. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Looking here, we have from Cosmina. 
Uh, European Commission has already proposed a resolution framework for the banks. By the end of 2013, a proposal for the resolution of non-bank financial institutions will be released. What are your expectations with regard to the later one, latter one? It's a really important question. It's, it's an important file and we, we have a lot of expectations. Resolution is really about uh, the embankments I mentioned. I mentioned. So you, ha you have a bank failure. Uh, how do you make sure uh, the, 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 the amount of losses, which is really the, the tsunami, uh, doesn't reach uh, the citizens? So are we able to resolve a bank uh, without requesting the uh, implication of taxpayers and the money from taxpayers? Um, but again, as I said, and we explained that in, in, in one of our latest, latest papers, which is called uh, Europe's Banking Trilemma, which is avail available on the website, mm -hmm. what we say basically there is that as long as you have these giant um, underwater volcanoes, which are these too big to fail system systemic in, uh, institutions, uh, which are close to 30 worldwide, uh, you, ha you will have these tsunamis and resolution in the form of an, of an embankment will just not resist uh, the, these sorts of wave and so basically as long as you don't look at the structure of, of the banking system um, uh, and possibly uh, separate activities between commercial banking and investment banking which we'll go into much more extensively in, in the next uh, session of the webinar on the solutions um, again your resolution framework which is which takes the form of, of an embankment is of little use it's going to be uh, you know it's going to go overboard I would just add that indeed it's really important that you have this sort of framework also for the uh, for the um, for the non-banking institutions such as uh, the central uh, central clearinghouse uh, etc. But it's exactly the same problem of, of a tsunami versus an embankment. Mm -hmm. uh, question here: Andrew Aldane or often say that the system currently is too complex. What is finance watch point of view about about this? Well, we completely agree with uh, Andy Haldane um, that the approach that has been used for the last few years, which is to match uh, with regulation to match the complexity of the industry, which which is uh, which finds its source in the fact that the industry was left to develop its own activities and the, the type of activities, the level of complexity, etc. And the industry benefits a lot from this sort of complexity. The regula regulatory approach, which is to try to match with regulation that complexity, so basically to have very complex regulation for a very complex financial system, simply doesn't work. Uh, we see that, and and it's just you know pretty obvious that you know you would need huge amount of money for, for regulators and resources to be able to implement you know thousands of pages of regulation, and and you know on the other side I would say you know the banks do have these resources in, in the forms of you know thousands of lawyers who will try to. Um, maximize every little hole in, into these pages to make sure that they, um, they, they, they go around regulation and still develop activities that should actually be uh, forbidden by the, this regulation. So uh, we definitely agree with uh, Mr. Haldane that um, the, the regulation needs to be much more simple um, to be much more effective. Mm -hmm. uh, question here by Yen uh, about, you know, the the code of conduct that the industry might have, have set up here in order to, 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 to regulate themselves. Um, what is your point of view about this? And the question by Ian is, should we audit all existing uh, system like this? Um, what well, 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 yes, we should. I don't know if it's priority in terms of, of the limited resources that regulators have. So, yes, we should and, and no, corporate governance should not be left again to the industry itself. So. You know, luckily, uh, in terms of it's it's not about codes of conduct only anymore. Uh, you do have um, corporate governance um, measures that that are included in in many pieces of regulation. So so the regulator is actually uh, being uh, prescriptive in terms of how a bank should conduct uh, uh, corporate governance. Um, but uh, again, it's a question of the of the quality of these texts and and and, and is regulation prescriptive. Prescriptive, sorry, prescriptive enough mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that um, uh, you know corporate governance is, is effective and, and at the benefit of society. Yeah. Um, back to you know being at the benefit of society. Uh, finance watch. The motto of finance watch is you know, making finance serve society. Uh, what I think you often call as you know the real economy. Um, after the crisis. Have we seen something like, you know, 
more credit that are allowed to uh, to to uh, you know companies and and other actors in, mm. in the real economy. No, no, definitely not. So, so that's that's one of the, of the major points is that, um, and it, and again, it's related to the fact that the, the regulator doesn't go as far as to um, challenge the nature of the activities of the financial industry. For example, where should money be invested? And so, unfortunately, the the different bailouts and also the very cheap liquidity that has been injected in the system has not resulted in um, more credit to the real economy, uh, long term infrastructure, and, and other. Um, you know, project importance uh, to society or the real economy. So uh, the answer is definitely no. Um, but also, more generally, the the I think related to that and, and the fact that finance serves the economy, there is increasing research that shows that um, actually the, the liberalization of the financial system uh, and also the, the growth of that system, which we can call financialization, is actually detrimental to the real economy and to growth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that the fundamental equation that, that, that underlines uh, the, the, the paradigm of, of self-regulation that we have for 30 years is simply wrong. It's, 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 it's proved wrong by the facts. Um, so it's urgent that we change paradigm just to allow uh, this, the financial system to again uh, serve society. Mm -hmm. But it, it is in, it's interesting because you mentioned growth and we have a question by Sandra. How relevant do you think is the use of GDP growth as a justification for policies on finance sector. Should we not challenge more this dogma? Uh, I mean, this is uh, an interesting question. Uh, I don't know if, if you're working on, on, on that in, um, in Finance Watch or, or, or it's, it's, it's another type of question. No, no, so, I mean, we're not working on it directly. It's a very good question and, 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 a, and a fascinating topic. Some of all, the members of Finance Watch would be working much more extensively on, on the topic. I think it's the minimum measurement. So, you know, obviously the fact that financial crisis have a detrimental impact on growth um, and related to that a, a very negative impact on, on employment and so on um, shows a minima, the, impact, the negative impact on ordinary uh, citizens in Europe. Uh, but of course we would agree, but it's, it would be the subject of, of another discussion, uh, that it's, it's a very imperfect indicator of um, well-being in general and um, and even you know um, the good of society uh, in general. So we sh we should definitely a, a minima complement this in this indicator with others uh, that would that would allow to show other actually negative impacts of the, the financial system as it is organized today uh, on society uh, in general. Um, here, let me check. We have many questions, and I, I will have to uh, to uh, to take the last one. I think. Um, the last one is basically how strong is the potential of critical shareholders of financial firms in terms of changing the lobby activities, investment activities, or at least to provide transparency. Mm -hmm. So the potential of critical shareholders. No, it's it's big. It's it's very important, and it's but unfortunately it's only a potential. So we've seen that shareholders. Um, well, simply by, by the pricing of, of, of uh, banking um, institutions' shares, we, s we see actually that they do not believe uh, that regulation has been effective, so they have important doubts as to the soundness of fi these financial institutions. Um, of course, we would wish that they'd be much more vocal uh, in, and, and critical in terms of uh, making sure these institutions uh, change course, if you like, or um, really um, ch change their policies. But So the potential is there, but uh, it's... Uh, it's not been uh, very much used, uh, unfortunately, and, and it's 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 not it's not been used for, for it's not been uh, an element of change or a driver for change mm -hmm. so far. All right. Well, I'll have to close. Do, do you have a, a final word that you want to, to say? Maybe we're not express. I'm sorry for those who, who send us question. Uh, we have these uh, uh, with us, so we'll be able to to, to answer probably uh, by email later on. Um, but. Benoit, is there, is there something you want to add before we, before we close this session? Well, the first is that, as, as Mathieu said, we'll try, we, we'll try to answer your questions uh, separately if, if you still have some. Uh, second one, which is obvious, is, is please help us to improve these sessions to, to make sure they are, they are as, as useful as possible. Um, no, I, would, I think we mentioned it, but it's really important to understand that um, there, is no, there is no fatality. So I, I mentioned underwater volcanoes that really seems like financial crisis would be natural disasters, it, they really not. So it's, in that respect, it's a really um, uh, poor metaphor. 
um, actually the, the, these I said volcanoes, but basically the source, the root cause of financial crisis, which is too big to fail, uh, too interconnected, too complex financial institutions, um, are simply the product of human activity, and that human activity is called deregulation. And we, if you have the opposite, um, uh, and in, in a proper way, um, human activity, which is re-regulation on much sounder basis, uh, the source of financial crisis will disappear. It doesn't mean that it's, it's always going to be, a, you know, clear and calm water, uh, but it will never impact citizens. So uh, it's it's entirely possible, and I'm I'm, I'm afraid, but as well hopeful, uh, when I see the fact that it's it's really in the hands of citizens to put sufficient pressure on, on their elected officials to let them know that they think financial regulation mm -hmm. is, is crucial um, to the benefit of, of all the other and between us much more exciting human activities uh, if, if, if they want to, uh, to succeed. Yeah, maybe a, a question. So next, on the 5th of November, we'll talk about some solution. So uh, you find them already on our website. Uh, uh, maybe a word of introduction about this very shortly. Well, I guess we'll, we'll discuss them extensively, but I think yeah, we we've mentioned some of these some these solutions are related to problems that that uh, that we mentioned. Um, no, again, again, I will not go go into those right now, but simply saying that these for for these to be implemented, for these solutions to really uh, deliver the, the benefits, it's going to be about. Uh, citizens making this a priority for policymakers and, uh, and politicians. If it's not the case, uh, they will put their focus somewhere else where, where they have the impression that that voters uh, put their priorities. So um, I can only encourage you to, to, to spread the word and, and keep engaged into these, these issues, uh, which even if technical, unfortunately, have, have a crucial impact on, on society. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to close the, this lunch webinar. Hope you liked it. Thanks a lot, Benoit, for you presence and for all of you to, to attend the webinar. I remind you that on the 7th of November, uh, Finance Watch is organizing a conference here in Brussels. You can register online uh, and this will be of course much more technical with uh, all a series of, of, of speakers. Maybe you can say a word about the type of speakers that are coming to the, to the conference, Benoit? Well, I think it's going to be very interesting because we, we, have, we have both uh, existing regulators and EU institutions who, who will who will of course um, um, make the case for the regulation they have put in place, and we have also very high level and more critical um, speakers such as uh, uh, economists from the OECD or um, um, people who were in charge of financial cri um, fin banking crisis in the US uh, in 2008-2009, and who will explain uh, how it's very difficult to to face uh, these these big crises if you don't have proper regulation. So I think it's going to be a very interesting debate. Um, and of course, our angle is to, to challenge uh, what has been in place and to make sure that over the next five years, um, a, a much different type of regulation is put in place uh, to, to the benefit of society. Yes. So you find the conference program on the website. Thanks a lot for your attendance and talk more on the 5th of November. Have an excellent weekend. Bye bye. Thank you.